Hi there folks and welcome to this demonstration of OMS to ServiceNow integration using Azure Automation. So I'm going to start by looking at our OMS to ServiceNow runbook within the Calvarian Runbook Studio. You can see we have a number of activities here uh, including activities from our SQL integration module and our ServiceNow integration modules. There's a bit of PowerShell as well to hold it together. Um, looking at the activities in the Runbook Studio we can see how straightforward it is to configure our SQL activities because of the smart discovery which is baked into the modules uh, and again you can see similar for the ServiceNow activity so a number of uh, properties configured there there's a whole bunch of other optional properties you can see 70 optional properties for creating an incident I've got the bare minimum configured for this so there's our ServiceNow module and if we take a look at the SQL module so very similar to the orchestrator integration packs you'll see insert, update, delete activities um, along the same lines as you would do in the old orchestrator days so there's our runbook it's in our production automation account uh, not an awful lot of runbooks in there but you can see that the OMS to ServiceNow one is published that means it's ready to roll so if we take a quick look at our OMS configuration so you can see there's an alert configured um, and basically it's any events that get picked up with a time window of five minutes and a five minute check once we identify that then we launch the OMS to ServiceNow runbook using a webhook so we haven't actually configured a separate webhook but OMS has, has done that work for us Part of the process you'll have noticed was that we insert the um, webhook data into a database table just so we've got that recorded in case there are any issues that we need to recover from with later part processing. We then process the event and again we spit a, a, an individual event into that table. So the important part, we're trying to get our events into ServiceNow. So I'm just going to refresh that ServiceNow incident list so we can see what we've got in there at the moment. Okay, so the most recent event or incident at the moment is 11051. So I'm going to log in to my monitored server and generate a test event. Just a bit of PowerShell here. I'm going to write to the system event log an error event. Uh, and I'm going to include a GUID in that error event so we can see uh, what's going on. So if I refresh, we can see our new event in the event log and we can see the GUID in there so CED 33 AEB that's the that's the thing that we're going to be looking for throughout the process okay so if we switch back to Azure and we'll take a, a quick look in the Azure portal page this time so uh, let's take a quick look at the runbook in the Azure portal page you can see in here that our smart activities have been turned into PowerShell. That's how the integration module and the Runbook Studio work. They generate a smart activity, but Azure itself needs PowerShell code within there, so that's generated the PowerShell code. And of course, you can use that code in other PowerShell windows if you make use of the integration modules. Um, it's not just an Azure specific thing. So let's have a look to see what jobs we've got running within Azure at the moment. So we had one completed recently and uh, I'm just going to sit and thrash the refresh button now until we see that Azure job start off. Obviously the monitoring interval as I said that was set to check every five minutes so there's going to be a small delay and uh, I'll just fast forward through that delay. So you can see we now have our job in a queued state Let's take a quick look at the specific job itself. We should be able to see the webhook data and we should see our GUID within there that's been fed in. So let's take a look at the inputs. Okay, and if we expand out the webhook data, and I'm just going to zoom in on that. So we should see in the middle there there we go CED 33 AEB that's actually there in a couple of places in that test data okay good so this is this is the one that we were looking for 
and I'm just going to close that down. We're just waiting now for that. So we can see the run book is now showing a starting state. So it's launched the run book. It's going to be doing some of the work in the background. Um, but obviously, there were two writes to the database. The initial write to the database wrote to the webhook data table. That's before anything's been processed. And potentially, there could be multiple events within that single webhook trigger. So um, OMS batches up these requests as it passes them through. If we take a look in the webhook data table, so we can see there is a new record that's been created in there. And if we have a look in the OMS events table, we should see that that has been processed and all of the information has been extracted out. So we can see that again is our GUID that we were looking for. And if we switch to ServiceNow and refresh within ServiceNow, we should see, there we go, 1195952, sorry. And there is our GUID for our new event. Okay, so there you go. You've seen how how straightforward it is to generate a runbook using the Kelvin Runbook Studio, which integrates ServiceNow and OMS alerting. Thanks a lot for watching.